Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we are sharing what not to do when visiting Yellowstone National Park. All right, guys, so you've planned your dream trip to Yellowstone and you get there and let's just say these are some of the things that are going to make your experience not as fun, right? Right, yeah. <laughs> and the first one is staying in the wrong location. So mm -hmm. we have a definite recommendation of where you should stay mm -hmm. uh, and that is in West Yellowstone. And there's a lot of reasons for that. For one, it is the most developed city in mm -hmm. the area. Mm -hmm. And when you're in Yellowstone, you're generally not going for a day. You're going to want services. And it's the only place really that has the services. Mm -hmm. It has restaurants. It has gas. It has Stores, groceries. campgrounds, uh, you know, fast food restaurants, regular restaurants. Yep. It has everything you need. I would outfitters. Even, yeah, outfitters. Mm -hmm. I would even recommend it over staying in the park. Because even if you stay in the park, you're going to have to drive out to West Yellowstone to get your supplies every day or two anyway. So you mm -hmm. might as well just stay there and then drive in with everything that you need. And you're going to save hundreds of dollars probably mm -hmm. a night over staying in the park. Uh, and <laughs> Absolutely. It's, it's just going to be a better experience to mm -hmm. be closer to that. On top of that, it is a mistake to think that, well, some people think I have a campground booked in Yellowstone, I'm going to be right near the action, it is a huge park, massive <laughs> park. You can drive for hours in Yellowstone and not get to the other side. So West Yellowstone is conveniently located right outside the gate, and you're actually closer to Old Faithful and a lot of the big mm -hmm. attractions at mm -hmm. West Yellowstone than you are from inside the park at some of the campgrounds yes. on the north side of it. Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. And in line with... Uh, with aligning your your housing your lodging is you really need to book it in advance yeah. it may look and seem like there's a lot available whether you're camping or you're you know you need a, an rv space at a, a campground or whatever that may be or a hotel there's only so many spots and there's so many people. I mean, there's like about 4 million people go to Yellowstone every year. Uh, there's a lot of people looking to get in there and West Yellowstone is the best for a reason. They have the most accommodations, but you still have to make sure that you book well in advance. As soon as you decide you're going, go ahead and book your lodging because that's what's gonna go first. Yep, exactly. <laughs> uh, then the weather in Yellowstone is gonna change on a dime for you. So it could be sunny one day and winter the next day. Or both in a day. Yeah, or both in a day. So we have experienced that a few times and mm -hmm. just be prepared. The mistake would be to not bring everything with you. So if you, mm -hmm. Just bring all your clothes you're going to need, mm -hmm. you know, your, your warm weather clothes, your cold weather clothes, bring it mm -hmm. all, have it in the car with you because... Mm -hmm. Or layer up or whatever. On one hike, we started the hike and we were hot. When we came back, we were freezing. So and, cold. Yeah. You, Left our stuff in the car thinking, it's hot. We're not going to need our stuff. Yeah. By the time we came back down, it was so cold. The wind was blowing, literally was just cutting right through so us. So throw that jacket in a backpack. <laughs> Uh, yes. <laughs> then one of the biggest pieces of advice that, that I like to tell people for Yellowstone is to visit Lamar Valley, which mm -hmm. is in the very north. It's on the north east side of the park. It's one of the least visited areas, but it is well known as the best place in Yellowstone to see wildlife. Maybe the best place in the United States to see wildlife. Mm -hmm. You will see so many bison there that you will actually get sick of them. And so if you drive, <laughs> like they will actually get in your way so much that that you will be like, oh no, there's one coming. <laughs> drive, stop, drive, stop. Whereas at the rest of Yellowstone, there, there's not very many of them. And so mm -hmm. people, when they see one bison out in a field, like half a mile away, they'll mm -hmm. pull off to look at it because they haven't been to Lamar Valley. Yes. If they'd been to Lamar Valley, they wouldn't care about this one bison mm -hmm. that's way off in the distance because they would have just seen 500 of them walk in front of their car. Mm -hmm. And it, you can save yourself, you know, a lot of time that you spend looking for wildlife. If you, if you really want to see wildlife, just go to Lamar Valley. It's the best mm -hmm. place. Yes, it's not convenient to get there, but if you go there, get there before sunset, 
because they will come down from the mountain, walk across the road into the valley, and then... Actually stampede across. <laughs> kind of just all come down, and then at night they'll come, after sunset, they'll come mm -hmm. right back up. So Yeah. Although after sunset, they're even slower because they're just meandering back up the Yeah. <laughs> and it's dark, so you do have to watch out for you them. You do have to be very careful driving back at night. Yeah. <laughs> um, the other thing is, so when you go to Yellowstone is really, really important. So the weather there, as we said, is extremely <laughs> um, crazy, wild. Uh, it can get, you know, so cold and so much snow pouring down in the area. Best times to go are somewhere between between May and October but if you go when just about everybody else goes which is right in the middle of that season which is basically in the summertime which weather wise is delightful but you're going when everybody else is there and so you're going to be in traffic jams for hours you're gonna have you know difficulty parking difficulty hiking there's just gonna be people everywhere and it just gets more and more challenging yeah yeah, it's, uh, and it is kind of a RV mm -hmm. mecca. Mm -hmm. So not only is yes. there going to be traffic, it's going to be mostly RVs. <laughs> and they're, they're kind of hard to navigate. Being driven by people who have never driven them yeah. before. Yeah, which was us the last time we were there. <laughs> you didn't want to be behind us. So. <laughs> <laughs> and in that same vein is trying to do too much, trying to plan too much in a day. If you're going during that real busy time, there's going to be so many people there that you have to account for the traffic. So you're not going to, you know, if you set out one day and you're like, oh, we're going to go to these five places because they're not that far from each other. That's not going to happen. You'll be lucky to go to two of those things. Yeah. Um, if you can get there with how much traffic there's going to be. So there's a lot to take into consideration when planning the timing of your trip. We went later on in, in the year. We were there in September. Late September? No, October. Late September. Late September, yes. Late September, right before they started closing things down. In early October, they do start shutting things down. Um, so that does get a, a little bit challenging as well with your planning for your trip. So Yeah. And this is a park that you'll need to get out of your car some. So it's not a lot of national parks you can just drive through and see mm -hmm. everything from your car, actually. This isn't one of those parks. You'll need to get to the area and because a lot of the features are thermal features, mm -hmm. you'll need to get out and walk to them. Mm -hmm. And so that's what's going to add a lot of the time. You can't just get out and see it right from the parking lot. Right. The other thing is some of these features are timed features. Correct. And you'll have to wait for them. Like so Old Faithful. <laughs> like Old Faithful, you may have to wait an hour. Mm -hmm. you know, unless you just get lucky and show up five minutes before it erupts. Uh, so a lot of these... Uh, things that are going to be erupting, you might think, well, they'll, they'll kind of tell you when it's going to erupt. And so you might think, oh, if we wait another hour, we can see this one. Mm -hmm. And that's going to add a lot of time to your day because you didn't plan <laughs> on waiting that hour. And then you've you've gone ahead and done it because you really want to see this thing erupt. So. Yeah. And then another thing, too, is that, it, you know, as you're driving along and you're approaching an attraction, you start to see the cars parked on the side of the road, right? Yeah, you do. And you think to yourself you know what, let's just skip this one because it looks like it's jam-packed. Or you think, let's park here and walk right. in. Right, we'll park out here too because we can find a spot out here. But that's not necessarily the case. Don't let them fool you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you Many times we saw cars parked on the road mm -hmm. and we were tired and we were just like, let's just drive all the way up to the front and see if there is a spot. And almost always there was. Mm -hmm. So and, and it was like a half a mile. Right. Uh, of just right. walking along the road seeing nothing that you would have had to have walked. Mm -hmm. The other thing about it is if you're in a camper van or you're in a, a motorhome, mm -hmm. almost all of these parking lots, when you get in there, they have separate sections for mm -hmm. vans and motorhomes, mm -hmm. and they were always pretty empty. Mm -hmm. So you could, There were always spots yeah, available so we because never, it's hard to park on the side of the road in a camper van or yeah. an RV. There is overflow parking in a lot of places, and it is almost always going to be used because there will always be people that say, 
Let's just take the overflow parking. <laughs> that does not mean that the regular parking is full, though. Just give it a shot. Go in there to the closer parking because um, you'll likely be able to find a spot. Yeah. Now, Maybe one time there. we did go into a parking lot and then we got stuck in there. <laughs> we couldn't get out because the. Yes. So that oh, may, yes, at Mammoth. <laughs> that may happen to you once or twice. <laughs> and uh, you know there was no parking up yeah. front, and it was just a big traffic jam. So we got stuck in the lot for a while. <laughs> yeah, but it worked out. Uh, another one that's a mistake is to stop every time you see a car pulled off to the side of the road. And this you see is, people looking. This is what causes the traffic. If someone pulls off, and then you say, "Oh my gosh, there's something great there. Let's see what they're looking at." And then most of the time, it's like a kid going to the bathroom or something. <laughs> and, or, you know, someone's tying their shoe or that's not even wildlife. Someone's taking a picture of a bird and or we whatever. were One time we were out in Lamar Valley and we were just eating. And, and we were actually trying to do some pictures of ourselves. Like, Allie wanted a picture of herself with the van. And so we were taking pictures. I was taking pictures of the van. And... <laughs> People kept stopping to see what we were taking pictures of. And they were like, what's here? What's here? And I was like, just like, nothing, just us. Our van, you know. <laughs> and yeah. So if you don't see it, chances are it's, just not, keep going. it's not worth it. Don't hold it up traffic. Because you don't know what people are stopping for. And generally, they're stopping for something really not exciting to mm-hmm. you. So um, when you see good wildlife, that's why I say go to Lamar Valley. It's unmistakable. You'll see it. It'll be so good you'll know you need to pull mm-hmm. off. If, you, if people are pulled off and you don't know why they're pulled off, it's probably not something <laughs> you, that you want to see. So don't waste your time on that. Yeah, definitely. So this is basically, I, I think all of these tips will certainly make your trip a lot better to Yellowstone to just kind of be mentally prepared for any and all of these things that you will encounter when you're at the park. Hopefully these will help you out when you are there at Yellowstone having a great trip because you were heeding these tips that we shared this time around. Guys, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, like this video. If you have any questions about your trip, leave us those questions in the comments down below and we'll answer those for you.